The most wonderful time of the year. Scott, are you ready? I think so, but is my voice ready? It's getting there. Well, I just need three or four hours to warm up, and I did that with no warm up. No, okay. If I sang for three or four hours, I would be literally then talking for the entire week. With three or four hours, I'm a natural singer. That's true. <laughs> if, that, if that goes together, I don't think it does. Well, it is the most wonderful time of the year because it's time to watch Christmas movies. Yay! And I mean, while I like the Hallmarky type movies, I'll I'll watch one or two of those when you're not around because right. I know you yeah. don't care about that. It's kind of the same story over and over, is it not? Well, kind of. But you okay. just have to watch it. Okay. You need closure. <laughs> Even though you know what the end's going to be, you still need pleasure. Mostly. Sometimes they surprise you. Okay. <laughs> but we like to watch some Christmas movies over and over again occasionally. But what's your favorite Christmas movie? My favorite Christmas movie? Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. I would probably have to go with Elf. Really? Because we watch it. At, it's gotten to where it's a tradition for our family. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those where you can watch it a hundred times and you, you're still giggling at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I like also older movies like White Christmas. Like yeah. I used to, <laughs> I used to watch Holiday Inn with Fred Astaire and Bing Crosby. So I lean toward those forties and fifties movies. Were these even in color? Huh? Were they in color? White Christmas was, okay. but Holiday Inn was not. Holiday Inn, other than Elf, might be my favorite. Wow, I think I did watch that with you one year. Yes, you did. I forced you to watch it. And you loved it, didn't you? I don't remember. Okay. That's that's, that's one of the few watched. black and white movies you've ever seen. One of the very few. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we did a survey but online. But wait, don't you know what my favorite Christmas movie is? You were, you were acting like you had a, you were having a difficult decision with this. So I didn't know if you were ready to share. I'm ready. That. Are I, you ready to share? I think about it. Okay. I, I mean, Elf, of course, Elf is out there. I actually yeah. really like Home Alone. I love Jingle All the Way. Yeah. I can giggle at that movie. That's a pretty funny time. movie. The first one, not the second one. We watched the second one the other day it with was weird. Larry the Cable Guy. I didn't dislike it, but I did laugh out loud at it a couple of times. It's not one I would watch every year, but I was not like not happy with it. Like it was fine. It was, we were, we came across it kind of mm -hmm. like the year before where we came across Santa Jaws. That's what I was going to ask you. Yes. What was the name of that? Santa, Santa Jaws, Jaws, which was about, it was Christmas time and the shark was just eating everybody on the pier and but it had a santa hat on its fin <laughs> right, it so did. when it came out of the water you it, saw the, you santa, saw the hat. Little santa hat yeah. and at some point didn't it get wrapped up in like um christmas lights or something oh yeah yeah oh it was kind of like sharknado meets christmas right yeah meets santa claus is coming to town yeah yeah and speaking of santa claus is coming to town that's what i was gonna say i when i think mm. back to my childhood mm. i don't think about movies watching movies i always look forward to watching the tv shows santa claus is coming to town yep. rudolph the red-nosed reindeer frosty, frosty. The snowman yeah like i love i kind of like those i don't know if i watch them now and i'm like that's so lame but it's also a little nostalgic for me okay i'm gonna see if you know the song are you ready oh, since are you, you sang at the beginning i think i am have you sang enough i uh, know i haven't warm up just put one foot in, in front, front of, of the other. other. Yes, I know that song. And soon yep. you'll be walking out the door. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. You're supposed to keep going with no, it. I, I, to, I just wanted to hear you. You left me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, you kind of give an idea of our favorites yeah. and man, I didn't even think about that. The, all those old TV shows are yeah. awesome. Yeah. I love I like the TV shows. Yeah. So I wouldn't, I don't know that. I mean, I still could watch them now, but, and there's movies I would watch now, but my childhood, I think more of those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very perceptive, Rebecca. Thanks. I didn't even think of those shows. Yep. So we did an online survey mm -hmm. of our followers and friends. What did those losers say? <laughs> wow. <Just> Bob <laughs> Humbug. <laughs> Well, there's some interesting things that happened here okay. on the survey. Um, do you want the number one movie? Sure. What's the number one the movie? The number one movie with 21% of the vote. 21%. I feel like we're doing, the elections just happened. I feel like we're on a news cable station telling you all the latest. Get to it, are you? Okay. The number one movie mm -hmm. with 21% was Elf. Yeah, of course. Twenty one percent of the vote. That is like yeah. the most. I actually didn't realize that movie had been out as long as it's been out. Two thousand three. Yeah, think is what that's they like at. most of that's our twenty years ago. Entire lives. So yeah. I mean, especially when we would let them start watching that. I was like five when that came oh, out. Please. 
Um, yeah, keep going. Okay. So number two on the list is a Christmas story. Don't get it. You'll shoot your eye out. Don't get it. 15%. They're all So wrong. pretty close to first. Not, okay. not too far off. A lot of people love that movie. Okay, you mentioned Jingle. Hey, you know what I can't what? sit through in that movie? I'm just, I just it? had a realization. What? Such bad parenting. I can't, <laughs> I can't get through the parenting. <laughs> Why is the parenting bad? The dad is just rough and absent and the mom is a pushover and yeah. i think that happens in a lot of families though i don't know that it's totally unrealistic uh, it, it makes me cringe okay <laughs> <laughs> so a christmas story is not at the top of your list then um i think it just has some iconic moments that mm. we remember like sticking the tongue on the of pole, course. which you tried when you were a kid i did try that how'd that go it was terrible yeah. but my dad was right i shouldn't have done it and I had to stand there till my tongue warmed up. That was in Montana. It was cold. You had to prove your dad wrong and it didn't work out. It never works out. <laughs> That's true. Even today. Even today. Right. Never works out. Okay. So Elf is number one, A Christmas Story. Number two. Number mm -hmm. three, one you mentioned, Jingle All the Way. Yay. At 13%. So almost in second way. place. I mean, who knew that like a movie, a Christmas movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger would be like <laughs> in the top. Right. But he, it's so good. And his... It's cheesy, but good. Goofiness, like, it, works it. Yeah, it's a good cheesy. Who else could play that role and it'd be, like, as funny? Nobody. Right, exactly. Nobody. Okay, speaking of funny, the next the next one down is Grinch, the okay. live action version with Jim Carrey, with 10% of the vote. And I'm going to be honest, I never, I don't get this one. Like, you didn't get Christmas Story, yeah. I don't get Grinch. Because to me, it was, it was kind of a somber, odd movie to me. And I don't know. Can I be honest? Yeah. I don't know that I've ever seen it. Okay. Are you going to tell me I've seen it? I'm sure you've seen it. I'm sure we went to the theater, but it was apparently a forgetful for you. It was forgettable for you. Yeah, so. was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So along with a lot of these are like comedies because next on the list with 10%, we had a three-way tie here. Oh, okay. A Christmas Vacation, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, where he lights up the whole house and all that. So Also, bad parenting movie. Can't get into it. <laughs> you want some good parenting in here. I your... need good parenting and some Christmas. Yeah. It's a Wonderful Life at 10%, which is a classic, one of the classics. Mm. I lean... Black and white. I've only seen it once. When you go to the classic movies, I go to more of the musicals and not so much It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. I respect it for what it is, but it's not one of my top mm -hmm. favorites. I feel like he was just kind of whiny. Wow. Okay. That's good parenting, everybody. <laughs> he had bad parenting. I don't know who his parents are, but... <laughs> So raised, then raised a loser. <laughs> speaking of bad parenting, leaving your kid at home while you fly across the country, Home Alone is at 8% right. on the list. Yes. But you like that one. Though. I like that one okay. because it they 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 made a mistake. They don't have long-term bad parenting actually. They have It was just a moment. It was a moment. We've all had a moment. I can, But then they did it again on Home Alone 2. Well, they should have made Home Alone 2 or 3 <laughs> or 4 or however many they're on now, but I mean, it was a, with his family as large as they have, I think. That was a mistake. I wouldn't say that, like, as she, like, got them together to leave and the way she handled it after she found he was, she did the best to her ability. So, kudos. Okay. <laughs> Good parenting in that one. Okay. A White Christmas got 5% of the vote. Have I seen Which that? is kind of on my list. You've seen that one. Okay. It's got, it's uh, Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye. It's in color. You've seen it. Okay. You've had to see it. Uh, it didn't stick with me. And then at 5% with White Christmas, we have the Santa Claus, okay. which is a cute movie. It's cute. With Tim Allen. Mm -hmm. They just, they're doing, they just debuted a series that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And with 3% to round out our top 10 is Polar Express. I like the Polar Express. It's a pretty cute movie. There's just a couple. Not the greatest animation in the world, but. Really? Not in, not in my opinion. Well, that's your lane. Yeah. My lane's parenting. But I still think it's a cute movie. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I there's parts of the Polar Express that just like come to a screeching halt to me. Like when the little girl gets up on the roof of the train and starts trekking through the snow, and yeah. I just kind of want to take a little nap there. Um, <laughs> and then also there's a time when they get to like that final factory situation where who is it? Aerosmith is singing, yeah, like something, and I'm just rocking around the Christmas tree I'm or something. Like, some I don't know. There's Christmas some parts song. of that whole scene area that I'm just like, okay, you didn't buy the Rockin' Elf. No, I would just rather listen to Tom Hanks sing the hot chocolate song. Yeah, that's a great scene right there. That is a great scene. Okay, so we've talked about some classics. Yes. But we are here to talk about a new classic. Yeah, today. look at our shirts. That's right. Put a little jingle 
and they are jangle it's so what movie are we talking about rebecca jingle jangle jingle jangle it's awesome it's on netflix yes and you have to watch it this holiday season like right it, tonight what right tonight yes is that a is that a i don't know i just started a christmas song okay. i think <laughs> i'm writing a christmas song as we go well you're gonna watch it and you're gonna fall in love with it let me tell you the same choreographer that did the greatest showman did this movie and from the get-go i was like the choreography in this movie is incredible right it is so good and the actors oh so adorable <laughs> you have to watch it now it will become one of your favorites you it's will become watch it. our our family watches it every christmas now, it at least so once fresh. It's, i love it it's yeah. like it's a there's a freshness to it yeah um so if you're looking for your new favorite holiday movie you're going to want to watch jingle jingle tonight but listen right now we have on lisa davina phillip she is coming to us from England. Yes, she is across the pond. Across the pond. And she is, plays Miss Johnston in the movie, which you won't be able to miss her. She's phenomenal. <laughs> That's right. She is phenomenal. Yes. She steals the show. And we are so blessed to have her on our show today. Good morning, Jerry. Do you have something for me to play, Miss Johnston? It's Ms. I'm widowed. Remember? He's dead. Gone. Never coming back. A gift. Knowing what's inside. <laughs> Got it. Shut him. Geronicus. I know about losing things. But the magic isn't just in what you've lost. It's in what you still have. Okay, Lisa, thank you for heart, me, meeting with Hardy Party of Five and a Half today. We're so excited to have you on. Yay. I cannot wait to talk to you. I'm not kidding. I watched Jingle Jingle for the first time, um, I guess last year. And I mean, immediately gathered the family and said, oh, yeah. we're watching it oh, again. Oh, wow. It is so good. So good. So good. Choreography in it is amazing. And you are incredible in that show. Oh, I bless you. Uh, I just, the whole time I'm like, this, this is a role I want to play. Like you're just <laughs> fantastic. Brilliant. So we have been talking about like our favorite Christmas movies. And so aside from Jingle Jangle, like what is one of your favorite Christmas movies? Um, I have quite a few actually. I like funny mm -hmm. family movies. So I love Elf. Oh, yeah. I could watch That's Elf on repeat. Word. Like yeah. my favorite scene is when and he gets so excited. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm just hilarious. Yeah. I love um, Dr. Deuce, The Grinch Stole Christmas. Again, similarly, because Jim Carrey is just, he's just got funny bones. He's yes. just totally amazing. And um, yeah. and then I also love Home Alone, because I kind of grew up on yeah. Home Alone. The first Home Alone, though, not the whole franchise that followed afterwards. It kind right. of lost its trail, I think. But um, I, I just love the idea of the mischievousness of, you know, covering someone in glue and then feathering them and, <laughs> and, and and like throwing like marbles on the floor for them to trip I mean I never tried those things yes. but I could live vicariously through That's Macaulay right. Culkin and yeah. it was yeah. it was you know so I like I like fun family films that I can watch sort of with my daughter right. and she loves them too so yeah that's kind also of nice. you can have a daughter yeah that Yes. Yeah, we have boys, so we're very familiar with all those tricks. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they try them out. Oh, yeah, they. Oh my gosh. Sure. <laughs> no big deal. But we were talking about Home Alone because somebody was saying that's that don't really feel like that's a real Christmas movie. I guess it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't reference Christmas enough. But it's it. at Christmas time. But since it's at Christmas yeah. time, I don't know. I'm with you. I think it's a Christmas movie. It's, oh, definitely. It's definitely. I think so. Much more than Die Hard. We could go down that trail. But... <laughs> Much more, definitely. <laughs> okay, so when did you know that you wanted to be a performer and how did you make that dream a reality? Okay, so um, I knew I wanted to act probably from about the age of 12. 
So when I was growing up, so I was growing up in the 80s. I don't want to say too much because I'm going to actually give away my age. Um, so Sometimes up, is the 80s. It sounds so far away, doesn't it? The 80s. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, there wasn't that much um, representation on TV in terms of seeing black faces. Mm-hmm. So um, um, there were two programs that came on when I was about 10, which well, by kind of early teens. Um, the first program was called Desmond's. And it was set in a barber shop. It was a Guyanese family set in a barber shop in Peckham, southeast London. Uh-huh. And it starred Norman Beaton, who is a who was a complete trailblazer for black actors. And the second program was um, a sketch show called um, The Real McCoy. And that also had an ensemble black actors sort of in it. And um, it was like the first time I saw myself on TV, like really saw myself, like I'm a staunch believer in representation matters. So I saw that these people are doing it. So maybe I could do it as well. You know, it was a big deal for me. Um, And there were also, some of the actors were local. So I went to, um, when I was about 11, I went to a local fair in the park. It was one of those fairs where they have stalls that sell trinkets and they might have a little stage area set up for people to perform on and and there might be a, um, fairground rides and things. It was one of those things. And um, one of the actors from The Real McCoy was giving out flyers on the stall. She's no longer with us, but her name was Colette Johnson. And the two girls that I was with, we were just like floored in awe, like, oh my God, this famous lady is here in the park. Let's go say hello. And none of us wanted to go up to her and say hello. So we we went as a three, I think it was arm in arm, because we just weren't (laughs) brave enough. Um, And she gave me this flyer for a drama group called Second Wave. It was called Second Wave Youth Arts, and it was in Deptford, Southeast London. And um, I joined, I auditioned. I was on the waiting list for six months and then I joined and I was with Second Wave from about the age of 12 to 18. I then went to university and did a degree in drama, media and popular culture. That was more to please my mum and dad because they (laughs) wanted me to have a degree. So I thought, well, if I have a degree in drama, then at least I'm doing what I like, but getting what they want. Right. Um, And then when I left university, I thought, I'm an actor. (laughs) <laughs> but I so wasn't, like, I wasn't prepared. I didn't have, you know, the standard actor kit, like the photos, the 10 by 8s. I didn't have a voice reel or a show reel. I didn't have an agent. I had nothing. So I soon realised that I'm not an actor. And I thought I was going to, I'm just going to work in a theatre instead. Mm-hmm. So I worked as, as the house manager at a theatre. And I was there a year. It was fine. And I was kind of... I wasn't happy there because I knew that I really wanted to act. Yeah. And my role at the theater was to lock up the stage at the end of the night to put the padlocks on mm-hmm. and to and to stock up the bar and write rotors for the staff. So at my kind of yearly review, I went into the office and sort of said, I'd love to stay another year. And the whole idea was for me to save up to go to drama school. So if I stayed mm-hmm. another year. But they pulled the rug from under me because they said that they don't think I quite fit and they're going to have to let me go. Oh, um, oh wow. I mean, I didn't say that to them. I was just yeah. really cool in front of them. But when yeah. I went to the office downstairs, I was bawling. Oh, what am I going to do? But as fate would have it, I got a scholarship to go to drama school. So I didn't even have to worry about fees. Oh, so, my- um. So, so yeah, so I, I had a journey from just liking it and doing it kind of socially as a hobby right through to going to drama school. And the drama school thing was more so that I could feel um, that I had some grounding because I had the the kind of natural talent, mm-hmm. but I kind of lacked the finesse. And I think that's what drama school gave me, that yeah. little tick. Yeah. So your daughter's 12 years old. What if she came home with a flyer <laughs> that said, hey, drama school or what theater school or what the first thing you started with? How would do you, you know feel about that? Do you know what's funny? She is an actress. Oh, She's been acting professionally since she was nine. Oh, okay. she's been on, yeah. yeah, she's in. She's been on BBC. She's been on Netflix. She has a short film coming out early in the year. And people say, oh, you know, we knew she'd be an actress. I'm glad you knew because I didn't know. <laughs> I, genuinely, it wasn't that I was trying to push her away from it. Yeah. But she's seen that I struggle 
you know, there are times when I'm working and it's great and you get a film like Jingle Jangle and it's fantastic and you feel yeah. like you're at the top of the mountain. But there are other times when you're literally at the bottom trying to get a foot up and you keep slipping and yeah. you have to find a way emotionally and kind of mentally yeah. to balance that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, she acts already, but she says she wants to be a um, midwife. Uh, she wants to be an architect and an interior designer. Yeah. So I'm like, you can do whatever. She's 12. You can be whatever. Busy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She is. And the great thing is that she has you, you're a few steps ahead of her to guide her, you know, and, yeah. and what you're just talking about, the ins and outs of the emotional roller coaster that it is. Yeah. And Absolutely. Like she's a teenager. So she's going to need that wisdom from you. She is also way more savvy than I am. Mm. Maybe because she has me, that yeah. she's. I think maybe I dreamed of being an actor and saw the kind of, oh, it's going to be so wonderful. And she Romantic sees the kind side, of, yeah. right. And she knows yeah. the reality of it. Mm -hmm. um, but she's brilliant at, like, if I have to do a self tape to audition for a job, she will hold the camera for me and feed me my lines. Or she'll even direct me and say, mm, I don't think you say it like that, mom. <laughs> I think, and she has, but sometimes she's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's so cool. she gives you notes yeah. like like yeah. she has a real like i trained i trained for this but she hasn't trained she just has this thing this gift naturally yeah. that i admire so much but uh, yeah it's brilliant okay I love that so you were a stage actress for a long time before you hit the movies so once you hit the movies how did you did you consciously have to change how you're acting from the stage to the screen um my a short answer for that would be absolutely so like my mm -hmm. first job out of drama school I did was the Lion King oh, yeah. um and I loved that job I was I was a swing so that meant I wasn't on stage every night but I would have to be in show underwear and makeup and if anything happened throughout the show that was my job to run on and cover four of the ensemble girls Rafiki and Shenzi so I had a bible that was literally <laughs> It was like 10 bricks thick of wow. where I had to stand on stage, where I had to enter, what costume I had to put in, where I had to exit. It was, it was, there were tears when I was rehearsing going, I will never remember this. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was sort of a fire. It was baptism by fire. You yeah. know, it really taught yeah. me how hard working in a musical is eight shows yeah. a week. But um, it also made me see the beauty of it because I wasn't on stage every night. I was able to appreciate the show. So I would sit in the little box at the side and look at the audience instead of looking at the stage oh, because really? you would see people's faces light up. So I don't know if you've seen The Lion King, but the mm -hmm. opening scene is all the animals come down the aisle and come onto the stage and you can see an elephant and a giraffe on stilts and it is just awe inspiring. Yeah. And it filled me, it made me pinch myself and go I'm really lucky mm -hmm. so I was able to do some really lovely um, musical theatre bits I was also in Matilda I played Mrs Phelps in Matilda mm -hmm. um, I played um, uh, one of Odame's sisters in Ghost oh, yeah. um, I did Amen Corner I've done Porgy and Best I've also done um, a, a few other plays uh, as we've gone along but um, the transfer to, to TV was so it's it's a completely different kind of way of acting. Yeah. On stage, you have to be big. Right. You have to play to the people right at the back. And then on TV, it's completely different. It's so minuscule. It's like you're not, you feel like you're not doing anything. Like yeah. just raising your eyebrow means so much. Uh, Whereas on stage, just raising my eyebrow might not read mm. unless you're in the first three rows. Mm. So it meant that I had to pull everything back and be smaller. And mm. I'm quite... um. I'm quite an animated person, so that's, <laughs> that's quite, I speak a lot with my hands and stuff. So, yeah, that, I had that's, noticed. That, <laughs> so that was, that was quite, um, that's, it's been quite a challenge for me. Um, yeah. I, I, the first, the first kind of TV stuff I did, I was in a program called The Royal Today, where I played a nurse and I had to film a scene where, so the main character, he's down on one knee and he's proposing to his girlfriend. And they just did a kind of shot where the rest of the staff are in the, the room and we're reacting to him proposing to his girlfriend. And I was giving it, I'm on stage going, oh, it's that wonderful, great, fantastic, oh, it's lovely. Well, I should have just been complete. But the, the thing is, no one told me I was doing that. Yeah. It wasn't until I saw it that I went, oh. oh. So on stage, we would call that drawing focus. Like yeah. you're taking 
attention away from what's going on and making it about you. But I, I wasn't, I wasn't aware that that's what I was doing. Right. Oh, yeah. That's how I had been trained. Yeah. So, so I'm glad no one watches the world today now <laughs> because it's quite embarrassing. But um, um, yeah. So, so, so being on TV, I would say so naturalistic and yeah. maybe a little, even a little bit quiet. Sometimes, like, I have to turn up the TV when I'm watching programs yeah. because I find that the actors speak really quietly. Uh-huh. Um, whereas on stage, it's all about projection and, yeah. and giving it from the diaphragm. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's, 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 so it's fun, but it's very different. And the only how you can learn it is by doing it. You can't yeah. tell somebody. Yeah. I think I had to go through that and see myself looking like an idiot on the screen to make myself <laughs> realize, nah, you can't do that again. That's funny. I think that Miss Johnson actually kind of encapsulates both of those. There's plenty of times that she's obviously big and gregarious. And then there's times that she's just so like, you know, sly and like the cute little playful things that she does. I think it's like a perfect blend of you. Oh, bless you. <laughs> and so speaking of Miss Johnson, that was your first major movie role in Jingle Jangle. So tell us, how did you feel when you got that part? Oh my God! I was there's a video. David has he's a very yes, naughty. Oh yeah, we're gonna, video. we're gonna show that video. Pop it in. Yeah. So I'm sitting here in the studio in London with, uh, of course, of uh, all of our our music team, all these amazing Davy Nathan, Young Harvey Mason, little Thriller, Mike Jackson in the back, Glenn Talbert and Chloe, and uh, we have here a young lady who has uh, uh, Lisa Devine. What do you think of that song? The song is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, what do you think of the mu- musical you've been uh, reading with? Ah, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's just, it's, it's, it's almost otherworldly. Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely blessed by the ancestors. Yeah. What I if think. I told you that we're going to cast you as a role of Miss Johnson? <laughs> and that you're going to be starring opposite no. Forrest Whitaker, Felicia no. Rashad, Keegan, no. Michael no. Key. No. Yeah, Anika Noni Rose, oh you're going to be joining the cast no! of Jingle Jangle, no! ladies and gentlemen. So, so I went to the recording studio to just play around with Miles and Miles, and then he called me into the room, and everybody's in there. Yeah. So, and he's also got his phone on me, and he's recording, and I wasn't expecting this. I was just going to go in to say hi, and then yeah. go to the next room, and he he just he kind of reels me in says oh what did you think of the the song that you've just heard and I'm like on the spot going ah, it's a song. <laughs> and then he's like and how would you feel if I told you you got Miss Johnson and I <laughs> loved it I'm clapping like a seal I'm jumping <laughs> I'm screaming I'm you know like sometimes when people put put a put a phone on you you kind of have a persona right that yeah. persona was completely gone it was literally me like a child <laughs> like a child just clapping and screaming and hugging David and going no no way no way it was just it was wonderful it was it was a complete surprise because I know that David had my back he really wanted me for this part but I wasn't 100% sure that Netflix execs and things were happy so Mm. I always felt like I was on tender hooks because I know they were looking for um an Aretha Franklin kind of voice and I can sing I've done musicals but I can't sing like Aretha. So, um, <laughs> I don't think very many people can Nobody sing. can. So, so, nope. I mean, Marisha Wallace, <laughs> Marisha Wallace, who sang Miles and Miles, has done an incredible job because it's a fantastic song. It's really catchy. Yeah. And I love dancing to it. But wow. I, I had to master <laughs> lip syncing, which I still think doesn't look particularly great. But um, again, it's one of those things, if you've never done something before, you kind of have to try it and then learn from it. So if ever I was put in that situation again, hey, maybe I'd do it better, you know. Yeah. But um, it it was an, an incredible experience. But I I I still am in shock when I watch that movie and say that's me. That's yeah. me. That's me right there. I did that. Yeah. And because yeah, I, honestly, I I can't even I can't even speak now. I'm still I still watch it. Oh my god. Because <laughs> it's a film that I would watch. So I think that's what makes me appreciate it. Or it's a film yeah. that I would recommend to friends that go, oh, you have to see this film for Christmas. It's fantastic. But yeah. I'm saying that and I'm in it. Yeah. Complete joy. Complete yeah. joy. 
Yes. So in general, do you, are you okay watching yourself? Because I've heard some actors say, I never watch myself and some like to watch it to see how, what I can do better. How do you feel watching yourself? I'm, I'm the, I like to watch myself to see how yeah. I can improve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, you know, and I might watch myself and go, mm, why did I do that? Or why did I use that take? The second take was so much better. You know, it's like, but I mean, you, you, it's, it's, you, you can't see the overall picture of what, you know, you're the director or, or what people are putting together. So you have to trust that mm, they know right. what they're doing. Yeah. But I do like to watch myself because I think it's a great learning curve. Oof, I do not like to even watch these these videos uh, right yeah. here of us. No, not even. Here's no. the difference. We're not getting paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it's kind of like being a baseball. It's not a job, full-time job. It's like being an athlete. They watch video to see how they can do it better. Yeah, time. So right. I, that makes sense to me. <laughs> yes. If I think I need to watch this more. If I were an actor, I'd want to watch it again. Like to see. Yeah. I think I could take myself out and go, okay, that that's not really me. I'm just seeing what this actor's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. speaking of David E. Talbert, he said in an interview that Mrs. Johnston was the heart of the movie. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. So for you personally, how would you describe Mrs. Johnston and what did she, <laughs> what did that character mean to you? Um, I mean, I, I love David E. Talbert. He's just a wonderful, wonderful man. Um, and for him to say that, it means a lot. And he did tell me when we were filming that Miss Johnson was his favorite character. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. But then there was also more pressure because then I have to do her justice to live <laughs> up to the character that he's had in his head. Oh, because, yeah. I mean, he was, he worked on Jingle Jangle for 22 years before it finally got made, you know, put oh, it down and going back to it and put it. So he, he must have known all the characters inside out. Right. So mm. then to try and breathe life into it, I, there was a little bit of pressure, but he's so um, lovely and warm. It, 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 mm. it was not easy, but um, he didn't make it difficult for me. Um, I think he's right in the sense that Miss Johnson brings a kind of a warmth and um, a wholeness. Um, she's the type of person that um, she sort of, she's, she, she brings a, this kind of joy and happiness. Not, it, not that, you know, everything in the world is good, but she sees good in everything. Yeah. So that's kind of like, I think she brings a kind of experience. Uh, we don't hit, have sort of see much of her backstory, but from, right. from, from my own research, I thought maybe she's, been married before maybe she's widowed and lost mm -hmm. her husband so she understands what Geronicus is going through mm -hmm. I think she um she also represents a kind of uh forgiveness like mm -hmm. um a forgiveness of yourself and for other people because mm -hmm. I mean in the story Geronicus has um a strained relationship with his daughter and she has to forgive him for being let down and he has to forgive himself for giving up on his dreams mm -hmm. so I think Miss Johnson gives him the space to kind of sigh and to breathe mm -hmm. and to start again. It, yeah. She 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 offers a kind of hope for a new beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's, I totally agree. Yeah. And her perfectly placed hat and her perfectly <laughs> outfit. She's Thank so you adorable. to costume. <laughs> <laughs> So incredibly adorable. She, so on set, like I love the choreography. I just was eating the choreography up. And Scott um, had mentioned to me that the same person that did The Greatest Showman did that choreography. And it is yes. so fantastic, including even your scene, you know, where you're dancing around the store and all of that. It's just so good. So yeah. did it, did it, how did, how did it feel on set? Like you've got all these moving parts. Was it as magical as I want it to be in my mind? Um, <laughs> no, there was a lot of sweat, <laughs> blood and tears. So I, I, what was lovely was that I'd worked with, so Ashley Waller was choreographer and, and his assistant, Jen, and I had worked with them previously on Ghost because oh, they yeah, were okay. the choreography team on Ghost. So I, I was aware of how they worked. Mm -hmm. Um, I won't say military like, but you know, you know, you have to get on with it. Okay. Do it again. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, do that again. So, I mean, even when we were filming in between takes, I mean, I have a corset on as oh, well. Yeah. And I think it was five layers of clothes. Oh my word. Um, so oh. I was sweltering oh, my and, God. and we filmed like in summer, yes, there's snow on the ground, but we filmed between like May and August. 
So it's hot and there's light. So in between the makeup ladies will be patting me down and reapplying the makeup. Um, oh. So, it, I mean, there was lots of wonderful moments. What was funny was, um, so Jeronica didn't have to do anything. So, um, <laughs> Forrest was kind of laughing in that, you know, he just has to walk around. Right, you know, yeah. While Miss Johnson yeah. spins and turns and, and oh. tries to get his attention and preens and, and she's sort of willing for him to just look at her and he's just so disinterested. Right. Um, so that that was fun because um, we, we sort of likened it to, I don't know if you remember a cartoon called Pepe Le Pew. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. there's, there's a little skunk who's chasing yes. the cat and I felt like the skunk that was constantly <laughs> trying to get this cat's attention um so it was it was it's a wonderful scene I had to marry up the lip syncing with the moving mm -hmm. and with filming you have to be able to bring it every for every single take yeah. even if you're tired you have to be able to go for it there was there's one <laughs> there's one moment where I have to land really sexily on the chaise long and then the <laughs> backing dancers pop their heads out at the back yes. and um on one take I landed but I completely ricocheted off the chaise log and onto the floor <laughs> spread eagle I was so embarrassed I didn't move I just froze because I didn't know what to do I think they thought I was dead <laughs> and then I looked up and they all burst out laughing oh, and <laughs> David was like that's going in the outtakes so I was like great <laughs> that is hilarious I do, this is weird. I do choreography for our Christmas gala at our church every year. Oh. Every year, it's usually like teenagers and above. And this year I have preschoolers <gasps> and no, they're not cute. It's, it's awful. I would like one's going to be turned with their back to the audience. The other one's right. picking their nose. They're going to do whatever they want to do. It's so bad. I would rather deal with 100 teenage girls than these children. I mean, I don't even know how those people do that all day long. <laughs> it's, it's so, so cute, though. Like the little videos that will come out of that. Just I know. I have I have them putting on Santa beards at one point, and they're all like, bah, bah, bah. They're like <laughs> fur out everywhere. It's like a mess. <laughs> Not, not as cute as I wanted it to be. <laughs> so, and do you have any other like memorable moments that you remember on set that were interesting or fun? Um, so I had to sing the Miles and Miles reprise, and I didn't know I was going to sing it. I just assumed for, I would just lip sync for everything. So this is the bit that comes after Jeronicus has kissed Miss Johnson on the cheek. She's sitting oh, in the yeah. van and she goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she just drives away with this. She's so excited now. She's got her man. And so David said, I want you to sing that live. I was like, oh. okay. 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 <laughs> I you know, I think maybe he didn't tell me because he knew I would have panicked. Yeah. Um, so I hadn't practiced it, but clearly nobody else knew that that's what we were going to do because he was like, roll sound and nothing happened. Because no, nobody had been queued up, the music okay. wasn't in the right place. Oh, yeah. So, like, I'm filming, time is money, and it felt like this eternity, waiting for the music to start. And <laughs> yeah. I'm getting more and more panicky, and it's there's the kind of deathly silence. Now on set, there's literally about a hundred people because there's costumes, there's wig, there's makeup, there's sound, there's lighting, there's all the people around the back on computers. I don't know what they're doing, but they're <laughs> typing frantically. <laughs> and it's now silent because the music isn't playing. And it's Forrest <laughs> staring at you? Uh, Forrest, Forrest <laughs> is next to me in, in standing outside of the um, van. His little hand comes through the window of the van and honks the horn. <laughs> and it literally, everybody just burst out. He literally, you know, like when the ice breaks. Because right, it felt yeah. like everything was getting so tense. But that horn, just the echo of it around the room just made everybody burst into tears. And then I was like, it was a thing. It was, it was, it was yeah. him. <laughs> it was just like, so that was lovely. Because there's a real, um, there's a real playful side to Forrest. Yeah. Like, I think my impressions went, before I met him was that serious actor. Right, yeah. You know, I have to watch how I speak around him, but he's just really playful, especially around the children, yeah. especially around um, like Madison, um, Madeline and Kieran. He was just really warm and bubbly and silly and funny and, and making everybody, he has a knack of making people feel at ease. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't, yeah. there was no bravado. Mm -hmm. There was no, um, he was humble and yeah. sweet. You wouldn't like, he spoke really softly. 
Yeah. Like I would have to crane my neck to hear what he was saying because <laughs> he was so gentle. Um, and like you wouldn't know he was in a room. Um, like when Keenan was in the room, you knew he was there because oh, yeah. he's Keenan's lively. Yeah. yeah, and and he kind of he takes over and he's laughing and he's but Forrest could walk into the room and you wouldn't know he was there. Yeah. He just, he's wow. so quiet and he just sits down and he yeah. just you know, and not to say one is better than the other, it's just mm -hmm. Just different personality. Different. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. How is it your first movie you're working with Forrest Whitaker? I mean, like a legendary actor. How blessed did you feel about that? I I yeah, uh, I don't know what David saw. I still don't know what David saw in me. Yeah. Because I, you know, you know. that role was really highly sought. No, but I feel like little old me from South East London. I don't, you know, and I know that. There were Hollywood actresses that wanted this role, so so he clearly he saw something in me, and mm. I I feel forever indebted to him for for just giving me this opportunity, because sometimes that's all it takes for somebody to have faith in you, and to yeah. believe in you, and then yeah. you 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 push yourself to to live up to that expectation, and and I think that's what he did for me. He allowed me to shine. Yeah. which is lovely, and I loved it. And I you know people say is there going to be a jingle jangle too. I mean, it took 22 years to get yeah. the first one here, so uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think there's also been talk of putting on Broadway, mm. so oh, that may nice. be another way to transfer it onto the stage, yeah. might be the next natural step. Yeah. It's really a magical movie, and you know, you say, humbly you say, oh, I can't believe I'm in this movie, but I can't imagine anyone else playing your role. Mm -hmm. And that's oh. when, that's when you know you've nailed it. Is you just can't imagine anyone else. Yeah. Well, if she, anyone else did yeah. it, you'd be like, "Oh, that's not her." Right. You know, that's she not said Lisa. Hollywood, <laughs> act, Hollywood people wanted. I was like, "Who? Who yeah. could do that?" <laughs> can do what Lisa does. I'll tell you one name. I think Queen Latifah wanted it. Uh, oh really? yeah, yeah. I'm a huge Queen Latifah fan. There I, you go. There I you literally go. got dressed yesterday, and I said to Scott, "Does this look like something Queen Latifah would wear?" Like I on the equalizer. On the equalizer. Yeah. I love her. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. So, like, when so when I think about that, it makes me go, "Wow, I did that." Yeah. But I think that won't sink in for maybe years to come. Maybe yeah, then yeah. I'll be able to feel more comfortable yeah. in that position. Right. Yeah. But at the moment, it still feels new. I mean, we're yeah. two, three years on, but it still feels fresh. It still feels right. new. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about miles and miles just for a second there. The physicality of that, like you're talking about lip syncing, which to me seems harder than mm -hmm. actually singing when when you're you've got to think about, OK, what are the words and all that? Yeah, but I I read where David was talking about it, that a gospel singer was actually an inspiration to how you were moving in that scene. Like, he, oh. like he mentioned this gospel singer, he told you to throw your back like when you I did I did throw my back there and you're just growling you <laughs> I, did about, I did it I did it I don't know how I did that back but I must have been channeling her because yeah. when I look back I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> um, um I I mean I guess when you're in it you just put yourself in it you, you do everything sometimes yeah. um it's not like I wouldn't say it's an out-of-body experience because I am still there I am still kind of present yeah. but it's it's like you throw yourself into something don't you 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 push you push the boundaries and you do things that but I you know Lisa wouldn't do but Miss Johnson would do that so right, yeah. I think it allows room for that mm -hmm. um um but the dance I mean I I've, I've done musicals so I know that I can move I know that I can dance mm -hmm. um and then with the the song being as funky as it was it, I think the music dictated the moves yeah you know yeah so that's it felt good it felt good then you had it. the pips there to back it up <laughs> yes yeah. yes i did i had my little back in bed that was fantastic yeah. i love their outfits too <laughs> yeah. they had the best costumes oh the costumes were amazing Great. that was um done by michael oh i can't remember his surname but he's incredible because he was able to mix that kind of um steampunk with kind yeah, of an that. afro chic mm -hmm. there right was yeah. lots of african prints in there and, was, and even the the um the hair there was you know we had there were afros and there were um Af you know african hairstyles like texture there yeah, was texture right. there wasn't kind of a weave in sight kind of thing mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it celebrated um blackness as being good and yeah. positive and strong yeah. even just having a black inventor 
yeah. I've always thought that is incredible <laughs> like because because growing up as a kid you know I loved Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Charlie and the Chocolate Factory those were the films that I loved as a child growing up but again I wasn't there yeah I appreciate right. it for being a good film with great costumes and dancing and singing and Dick Van Dyke and it was brilliant but there wasn't there wasn't anybody that looked like me and I think that's mm -hmm. what David has offered He's put something on the plate which is just as high a calibre. Yeah. And there's this wealth of black talent from both sides of the Atlantic as well, which yeah. I think is lovely. Yeah. Um, to give younger children. And I've had friends send me videos of their little sisters or cousins or nieces dancing to Miles and Miles. Oh, and they filmed that. them. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's like... <laughs> Because it's like what I said, when you see yourself, representation matters. And when you see yourself, you know that you can do that. So mm -hmm. it feels wonderful to know that there might be a little girl or boy out there mm -hmm. who I've inspired. Yeah. Who might think, oh, I can do this too. Mm -hmm. But that yeah. feels, inc that touches my heart. That makes me yeah, feel incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> and you speak of the African elements, that the snowball scene where that he's, that's when he's, to me, that's when the character is starting to like, let go of things and yeah. come back to life but the african drums and music they they mixed in with the christmasy music mm -hmm. yeah 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 scene. like you can just i love that, that too yeah. and i was asking david can i be in that scene that was, that yeah. was the one <laughs> can scene I help, can i help him yeah. out yeah absolutely i could have just been in a window somewhere just throwing a cell like, i was a, yeah. i was a part of that scene but that was incredible <laughs> that looks amazing to film <laughs> I loved everything. I mean, to me, the film has, you know, a great soundtrack. Mm -hmm. It's got this kind of CGI stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's got the animation in it as well. Sometimes it goes into that storytelling kind of clay animation. Yeah. Oh, which is brilliant. Um, obviously, yeah. Yes. Obviously, the costumes are great. Um, and, and just the, 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 the caliber of actors that they got together um mm -hmm. were great i mean it was kind of madeline's first big movie and she's done so much more since tiger rising and a few other things that she's done so it's it's allowed people to um to grow yeah. you know to to use that film and to to kind of as a springboard into other things and to other avenues and i think that mm -hmm. that's really lovely i think the legacy of jingle jangle and and the family that we created um I'm going to get emotional. Well, um, it was because it was just it was um, especially because I don't I don't have that much experience of being on the film set. So I just took for granted that this is what it's like. Yeah. And uh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful to me. It was nice having David and Lynn work together, husband and wife team, because mm -hmm. their their love and how they responded and like the two of you how you talk to each other and respond to each other it's beautiful to see you know that yeah. you can live and work together and do all these amazing other things it's mm -hmm. it's inspiring it's like it's like couple goals you know it's like you know it's, <laughs> it's nice but that, I mean David and Lynn work so well together and it, um um there were so many little things that they paid homage to I think um, one of the hairstyles, I think Toni Morrison is um, Lynn's, one of Lynn's favorite writers. One of mm -hmm. the hairstyles was a Toni Morrison hairstyle. Um, um, Lynn, Lynn's father, I think it was either the first doctor or the first dentist, black dentist in their area. So they um, dedicated one of the shop fronts was called the Sisson Arms. Mm -hmm. So it was named in honor of her father. Oh, wow. um, I mean, there's a few other gyms. There was a, a nod to Chadwick Boseman and Black Panther on um, Geronicus's briefcase where he, that he travels around the world with. One of the stickers, I think, might have said Wakanda on it. Oh, so yeah. there were so many little things, oh, yeah. so many little gems yeah. um, that I feel proud of. I feel like, wow, amazing.
yeah. he's David is an incredible storyteller. He has a lot of vision, and um, there's a real childlike nature about him. Mm-hmm. And I think it's probably something we should all be. We should all strive to be as as children. Mm-hmm. I watched a little girl. Sorry, I can ramble. Shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking. I was sit, standing on the balcony, and I saw a little girl walking with her dad. She must have been about two or three, and it had been raining the night before, so there were huge puddles on the floor. She had wellies on, but her dad had flip flops. Anyway, they were walking, and as they were walking truck or a car went past and splashed the puddles and her whole world lit up and her dad who was on his phone texting stopped what he was doing noticed that she was excited and stopped he put his phone away and for the next 10 minutes they just watched cars going through the puddles and then she stepped off the curb and stepped in the puddles and she said to her dad are you gonna come and he said i can't i've got flip-flops but you can go and she was just so happy that she could walk in a puddle like if you know as adults we can get a bit um downtrodden Mm -hmm. with life and I found that having my daughter enabled me to remember what it was like when I was a kid because you forget Mm -hmm. and it allowed you to say it's the best ever every day it stopped now. She's 12 now and she's on her phone and she's a bit <laughs> nonchalant at the moment. Yeah. But when she was really young, every day was the best day ever. And I think that's what David brings to this film, that mm. it's it's this excitement, this childlike curiosity. It's the best day ever. It's amazing. And it was infectious. It, yeah. it, you know, when you have the person at the top, the leader, the director, who has that energy, it trickles down into every department. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can, and everybody just pulls together, wants to do their best. And that's, and I feel that when I'm watching the movie, like it's become, it's one of the movies that we're going to watch every Christmas. Mm -hmm. And you get that feeling of that, just that excitement, at least once. We'll probably, we watched it like Tuesday and we're going to watch it again. (laughs) It's become that that iconic movie that you're going to watch with your family every year. And it's just, that's just awesome. Yeah. 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 Yesterday at Thanksgiving, I showed my mom a little snippet of your, of your, of your, one of your big scenes and I was like this is who we're talking to tomorrow oh my god yeah but it's so weird for me because it's like I'm still me nothing has changed and yeah. yes you know Forrest Whitaker kissed me on the cheek <laughs> and like I didn't want to wash my cheek if I'm being honest I didn't <laughs> but like nothing's changed I you know it's still the, I'm yeah. still the same and I you know and I love doing these things where I can talk to people and find out how much they enjoyed yeah. the film. And and even because it's all a learning curve as well for me to see what I can do better and, and yeah. what read and what didn't read and what, you know, it, just incredible. So right. thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Yes. What is what's next for you? Can you t- can you tell us what's next on what's on your plate next? I don't know. So um, <laughs> um, I just filmed something last week for a British daytime soap it's like a, a, a hospital drama um so I think that's coming out in February but I was just on as a guest artist okay, um yeah. so I filmed that um as I said my daughter my daughter's doing some voiceover work for some children's animation mm-hmm. called Brave Bunnies which is like a preschool thing so I get to chaperone yeah, yeah. <laughs> my many hats when you're a parent <laughs> you have many things that you do um and she also has a short film coming out soon so uh, between the two of us we're really busy but again life life goes up and down I've done um two Christmas films now I did a a black British Christmas film um the year before last called Boxing Day um, with a melamine but um as you said about home alone it was set around christmas time it wasn't necessarily a christmas movie it was more like that but it was wonderful it felt great to be in um a a british black christmas film because uh, like the black british culture is unique in itself you know so i remember at school when we learned about history we learned a lot about Malcolm x and um you know martin luther king and the civil rights movements but actually in britain we had our own civil rights movement Mm -hmm. we had the bristol bus boycotts where where um they weren't giving black men jobs on buses as conductors Mm -hmm. so they boycotted on the buses over here too but we don't find out about those things so it was nice to be in a black british movie that celebrated 
the um the culture from our perspective yeah 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 okay so you mentioned your daughter maya right mm -hmm. so she's a sickle cell warrior yes. so tell us more about her and just how she inspires you and then how we can help in that cause mm -hmm. oh so um but for anybody that doesn't know briefly sickle cell is a hereditary blood disorder um, you need to get it from both parents. Um, so I carry it, but I don't suffer from it. The, mm -hmm. sim the symptoms are um, pain and tiredness, and it's caused by the red blood cells instead of them being round and spongy and soft. Instead, they're more like a crescent moon or a sickle, hence it being called sickle cell. And they get trapped and blocked in the veins. And where they get trapped and blocked, it can cause a swelling and it can cause pain. But because the blood is everywhere in your body, depending on where you get this blockage, it can be something severe. For example, if you've got a blockage on your brain, it could cause a stroke. Yeah. Or just if you've got a blockage in your wrist, it might mean your wrist is a bit painful. But um, so it, it's um, the only known cure is a bone marrow transplant, but it's only really offered in very severe cases. Mm -hmm. So the treatment my daughter has is she takes daily medication, She's got to drink lots of water and eat a healthy, balanced diet. She's on a lot of pain meds um, and she just has to kind of not overdo things. If she gets too overexcited or too tired, it could trigger things. So it's also about finding out what your triggers are and just learning to avoid them. Um, what's inspiring about her? Um, she's um, She doesn't complain. She... She doesn't allow her condition to define her. She just kind of gets on with it. So at the moment, my car's in the garage. I normally pick her up and drop her to school, but we're having to walk. Um, and her school's on a hill. So um, it can take a little while to get to school because she needs to rest along the way. But she just gets on with it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's she. Um, she's she's just she's a wonderful spirit she has a wonderful soul she's kind she's sweet she's caring she's considerate she's also um she also spreads awareness about sickle cell so when she was about seven she asked me why did god give me sickle cell mm -hmm. and i don't know if i was even ready to 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 answer that question because i feel guilty that she has sickle cell because she it's hereditary she got it from me and i've it's my own personal journey struggling with this is what I've done to my child and seeing her in pain or seeing her in hospital for weeks at a time or seeing her have a blood transfusion or, you know, so I have to deal with a lot. But I said to her, maybe God is giving you this for you to share your journey with others. And maybe by telling people what you're going through, you're going to be helping them so they don't feel alone um, and that just opened up her world. Then we met other sickle cell warriors. And I mean, many older warriors say that you know, life is so much different now. You get the help that you need. So my daughter has um, uh, psychotherapy to help with her pain management, which wasn't offered in the 70s or the 80s. You know, it was kind of just looked over. So there's a lot more help and a lot more understanding now than there was. It could still yeah. be a bit better. It could still be a bit better. There have been um, terrible horror stories in the NHS where um, doctors don't tend to believe patients who look like me when we say we're in pain. They think you're just after the drugs. Oh, so yeah. there have been some terrible stories, but I guess the more we highlight the stories, the mm. more there'll yeah. be a change. In terms of what people can do, if you can give blood and you want to give blood, you you can you can do that. Um, one donation of blood helps up to three adults. Mm -hmm. It's more if it's children. Um, you can help raise awareness. Mm -hmm. um, you can help raise money for charity. I mean, some of the money can go towards um, advancing in medical treatment. Sometimes money can go towards um, you know funding a trip for children with sickle cell so that they can um, they can go away from home from their parents for a week and do the normal stuff like canoeing and abseiling and all the wonderful things that as a parent with a child with sickle I'm like hell no I'm not doing that no 
But, you know, if it's an organized trip where there's, well, my daughter did that last year where she went with doctors and nurses and, and she was able to go away and be herself. And yeah. then I was able to have a week to myself as well without worrying, you know, is she okay? Is she safe? So, so it was good for both of us. It was a great kind of learning curve. So yeah, you can raise money for charity or even just, I mean, the simplest thing I think people can do is if you hear somebody's got sickle cell, just talk to them and ask them questions, find out about it. Um, yeah. See if there's anything that you can do to help them. Yeah. Um, like my daughter has to drink a lot of water. The other day she went to school. I walked her halfway to school and then she met up with a friend of hers and she was like, I'm going to go with my friend now. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I said to her friend, Laura, Laura, please don't walk too fast if she needs to go. So my, Maya looked at me like, Mom, stop it. But I just, you know, but, but the, you know, that's what you can do to help. If, you know, if you're walking with somebody, it takes them a little bit longer. So be mindful. Don't race ahead. Walk at their pace. Mm -hmm. Ask them if you're making yourself a drink. Ask them, do you want a drink? Because they have to stay hydrated. So, yeah, it's just just um, just being mindful that somebody around you needs a little extra TLC. Yeah. and helping with that well you and my are an inspiration yes i've already looked and more today today about oh. <laughs> yeah. so and your voice could be a scented candle i could listen to you <laughs> talk all day i know is it weird to ask if you'll just call and read a storybook at night? A story yeah. night. <laughs> what are you like <laughs> as you're talking i'm thinking man i could if you're you, like if you yeah just it's so <laughs> Well, it's like engrossing and relaxing and yeah. I know. So, just, so but too much hands. Too much yeah. hands. Too much hands. <laughs> Rebecca talked with her hands too. I so. do. I have to sit on them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So we are so thankful that you took time with us today. You're such an inspiration to us and your daughter is an inspiration to us. She That's shows right. such great perseverance and I love not met her, but you just describe her in such a way that I think she would be everybody's best friend. I, I love oh. the so thank you, thank so you much. for sharing a little bit of her story with us too. And thank you for taking time with us. We know it's a little close to dark over there across the pond than it is here. So yeah. um, we appreciate you taking time to be with us today. You are oh, thank you. We're going to go watch her, your other movie that we have not seen That's yet. Right. We're going to find Boxing Day. Too. We're going to find Boxing Day. <laughs> Yeah. brilliant i play a jamaican auntie in that so it's okay. completely different <laughs> completely different <laughs> awesome so thank so you thank so you much. so much for having me you guys are brilliant thank you i told you you're gonna love her and you're gonna go watch jingle jangle right now well what if you don't have netflix listen if you don't have netflix scott's gonna put our login information in <laughs> oh, the show notes oh really <laughs> So we're going to have the Netflix police after us. Come at me. Okay. Think about it. I think that's frowned upon. Is it illegal? It may Don't be. answer that. <laughs> this is incriminating. Yes. I think it's time to end. Yeah. I'm going to edit this out. We'll never see it. Go watch Jingle Jangle. It is the best Christmas movie ever. You will fall in love with all the characters in there, but obviously Miss Johnston has her heart. It's going to be a new family tradition. That's right. Merry Christmas from Hardy Party of Five and a Half. Over and out. We'll see you next time. <laughs>